Hello everyone, welcome to your favorite book poet. Welcome to Bookverse. So today we'll be discussing the book Ruthless by Crystal Zara Appiah. On this episode, there are pertinent um, themes we'll be discussing. We'll be discussing personal choices, postpartum depression, parenting, and racism. I've had this book for a while and I've seen reviews of this book online, but nothing actually prepared me for what I read when I had finished. And I didn't just want to come and jump on the mic to give a review. I wanted to embody the story, embody the plot. I wanted to come as the book has made me. I wanted to come with the feeling it's left me. So I'll be able to transmit what I have been able to learn and the feelings it has actually left me with. Now, at first, I really wasn't getting the book because there was um, a lot of back and forth in time differentiation. Like you could see 10 years back, 15 years forward, two years forward, four years back. So if you're not very particular and if you do not um, commit yourself to the plot, you might actually get to miss it because there was a lot of time differentiation going back and forward. Now, I'm in talking about racism. Racism was actually dealt with a lot by the author in the plot. Now, um, one th- certain things about me when I'm discussing a book is or reading a book is I take notations of the things this the book puts us through. Now, one of those things I read about racism is that racism has left some persons scarred for life. The skin on Ife, who is the major character here, tells the tale of hate and man's gruesome hate for another man's skin. A kind that differs from your kind is still a kind. Now, this is from me. A kind that differs from your kind is still a kind. Racism is, is, is such a strong thing in Ruthless because we see the main character, Ife, has her body scarred by kids in school when she traveled abroad. Um, They couldn't understand her kind and she was really, really bullied because of the color of her skin, the hair on her head. And this left an indelible mark on her. Another pertinent thing about the, the book is, I like how it all began. It makes you ask why. It piques your curiosity. Now, within the time frame where the author takes us back and forth, like going through a time loop, you want to know what happened because in a way, she makes you know how it all began, how it is going, how it all began, and how it is going. Now, you want to know what really happened, what made Ife pick up a passport and decide to go back to Ghana. She has a family. She has a husband, she has a child, she's an artist, she's well, doing well for herself, she has a career, she has a husband that loves her, she has a kid, but she just picks up a passport and heads to the airport, she's going back home. She didn't tell her husband, she didn't worry for what was going to happen, she wasn't picking his calls, there was no proper information. Now, this wants to make you know why, why is she doing all this, why did it have to be like this. Why did she get up and leave? Another thing to talk about again is postpartum depression. Now, postpartum depression is not recognized enough in Africa, especially by the older generations who expect you to just get through it. However, Mame recognizes the value of a community. When she asked that if he comes back to Ghana with leave, they might not know the name, but they know she couldn't do it on her own. Now, postpartum depression is a terminology that has come to stay by the name. But Africans have always believed and always imbibed the culture that a nursing mom and a new mother cannot do it alone. And this is why the culture of community has been imbibed in the fabric of our being. You see a mom who has a baby, there are several thousands of women in the house assisting her with the baby, helping her to cook the meal, making sure she's settled in and all right making sure she has a hand, a lending hand. Now, we see the main character, if it goes through 
a real tough cycle to the point of having to forget a whole baby in the train. Now, no mother would intentionally abandon her baby, but she was at this point where she was tired. She was really, really tired. She was going through a lot at home within herself. She had a father-in-law who was down with stroke. She was, she was taking care of the man, taking care of the baby, having to be there for her career. And she didn't just know how to go about it. Now, some persons do not know how to convey their feelings. And in a way, it comes around to them soaking it all in and going through a really, really hard and tough time personally. And being someone who has been suicidal at a certain point in life, it's, it, the husband had to step in to ask, what do I do? How do I fill in the gap? How do I make it easy? How do I bring light back to your gloomy eyes? Now, postpartum depression is something that has to talk about. Uh, thousands and thousands of women have come online and on social media spaces to talk about how they felt when they had their baby. Some wrote about their own personal experiences having to do with losing memories, falling hair, not knowing what to do with themselves, um, having low self-esteem and the rest of them. Now, these are some of the traits and some of the things that comes to you. However, it differs for everyone. But one thing that is very pertinent is that there are certain changes that occurs when a woman has had a child. And at this point, it takes a community to step in, to make her feel you are not alone. We see you and we're hoping to get through this phase with you. Now, let's discuss not wanting children, which will come under the theme of personal choices. It is very, very difficult a task sometimes for you as an adult to be able to convey to other people that you have a right to do what you want and you have the choice being that you are of age and you are capable of making decisions that you feel are beneficial for yourself now we see the main character if he basically tell her husband and the love of her life that she doesn't want to have children the man thought it was a passing feeling something that would come and go and when she took in which she never actually bargained for, she considered every other viable option aside being a mom. Now, I have seen people who have made these choices to say they do not choose to have kids. They feel they cannot take the responsibility of having to make and take decisions for another person's life. Now, this is a very big decision to make. And I think it is very pertinent that when you're settling down, when you know that you do not want to have kids, but you want to get married, it is only very crucial that you settle with someone who is able to understand your decision, who is able to live with your decision, who is able to, to not second guess your decision or to not make you feel like it is a passing phase. It is only pertinent that you settle with somebody who settles also with your decision and not someone who along the line is making you feel like you are not complete by not having a child. So if you choose to live a certain way, I think it is very, very important that we, we settle with people who understand and who are ready to live by how we have chosen to live and who along the line will not make you have regrets or make you feel like you lost out on something because if um in reading ruthless you could see that if he never really wanted to have a child it happened by <clears throat> it happened by mistake and she was um in subtle persuasive manners um persuaded by her husband to keep the child now she had it very difficult she didn't know what to do she felt she was failing as a mom she had to second she was second guessing herself <clears throat> all through the period of when she had leave and this also boiled down to when she had the second pregnancy and this made her opt for an abortion which actually um put a divisive rule between she and her husband now she felt 
I've done this before. I don't want to do this again. Now, the man came from the angle of, You've, we've done this before. I think we couldn't do it again. Now, having to take out the baby was something the, practically the whole family was not in support of. And this really, really put a strain on the marriage. Now, this brings me to the conversation of asking. Because at some point, I really did struggle with um, picking a side was if a right to have taken out the baby in Ghana, knowing fully well that um, our husband was not in support. It also brings me to also question, does if he has a right over what choices she makes over her body? Does if he have a right over the decisions she made while being married to her husband? This is a very crucial decision. The reason, one of the core reasons why I actually like this book, Rootless, is because it asks certain questions. It puts you in a place where it makes you think. It makes you um, wonder, at, do these things really happen? But the funny thing is, these are real life situations. We've had situations and stories of people online who are, married yes and having to take decisions for themselves without the knowledge of their husband and it brings to question the institution of marriage what it is supposed to entail the sacrifices that it carries are you ready to make this if it were to be you how would you have done this what would you have done differently now not wanting children this is a thing that must be discussed do not assume that the person would come around later. Some people never ever go back on their various decisions. Now, <clears throat> another pertinent thing is when you have two people with unhealed trauma um, steadily triggering each other, they will someday come to find ashes in a place where there is supposed to be love. Now, if his husband has had an issue of his mother standing up and just leaving because she wasn't ready to play the role she wanted to do more with her life she felt she was tied tied down by having kids now finding to see his own wife do the same thing to him was a really big blow to the man he didn't know how to put himself together he felt like he was the one orchestrating these things that makes these women leave sometimes i feel it is enough that we discuss our pain as individuals so we do not carry them on to the next person and in this instance destroying what could have been knowing what triggers your partner means to help them put these things away as well not bringing it to their face and getting angry when they react now one of the favorite lines that really struck to struck me in this book in quote is it people even the ones who love you can be a weight around your neck. You just have to choose which weight you want to carry. Another a line that really struck me is says, in quote, maybe these two is brave. Whatever decision you choose to make, however you might feel it is, this also could be bravery. Because it takes a lot to take responsibility for your own actions, to say, I have made a mistake and I wish to fix it, to say, I made a mistake and I hope we could come together to find um, a common ground where we could both talk about how we feel and possibly find situations and how to go forward on that. This book is heartbreaking. This book is really, really heartbreaking because um, the author takes us through the circle of life of the main character, Ife, right from when she was a child to when she became suicidal to when she got married to when she began to thrive as an art curator, an artist, and then losing her life when it was all beginning to come together. Death is something that nobody knows when it will come. Therefore, it behoves on us to forgive, to let go, to to forgive, to forget, to make peace when these persons are still alive. Because that is something that comes and takes away that moment, that opportunity. And lest we begin to sing the songs of had I known, had I known I would have done better. 
I think it's only important that we, t that we seize the moment to make peace because nobody knows tomorrow. This book is a roller coaster of emotions. Honestly, it, it's left me in my feelings. It's like you're getting um, better at picking up the pieces of your life and suddenly you fall into a coma. You know, on, only this time it's, it's, it's death for our heroine. Now, for a double novel, I'm beyond proud of the author. I am really, really beyond proud of the author. She did amazingly well. Probably, buttress is what I always say, that only a woman can tell a woman's tale. I think I should write a book. <laughs> now, another thing is avoid regrets. Forgive people when you can. Be happy because no one is promised tomorrow. Being a painter is a career. Career choices should belong to the persons who get to live the life. Now, I would like to also discuss another character. If he has a sister called Sawar. Now, Sawar was someone who actually got married. Her husband promised her she was going to go back to school once they are married. But she got married, never went back to school, lived a comfortable life in Ghana, came back from the UK and motherhood she just fitted in smoothly now my question is what do you think of her character leaving everything in quote to follow man mm -hmm. like people in my country nigeria would say follow man more like chasing after man or maybe going after a man more like having an understanding with a man so she, what do you think of her character leaving everything to follow her own dream of being married and having kids and she never really went back to school. So we can see the differences in character. If he wanted more and was not comfortable with what she had, she wanted more. She never wanted children. Her sister was practically seemed to have been made for motherhood. She had kids. She was married. She never went back to school, never doubted her husband. And she just accepted everything. This is to show that people are very, very different. What is good for A may actually not be very good for B. And the expectancies that we give to both parties may not be realistic in the event of personality differences because what you expect from this person may not be what you'd get from this other party. So for Rootless by Crystal Appiah, I am really, really proud of this book and I greatly recommend. And I hope to get your reviews later. Yes, because I trust that when you finish it, you'd be here to say, let's discuss this book once again. In the meantime, have a very nice day and do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for being here. Goodbye.